Hi, this is Christian, and let's draw something interesting. Uh, these were the mountains that I drew in the last session that were different um, types of mountains or styles based on the same frame initially drawn, just a really simple up and down mountain frame. What I want to do now is talk more about doing mountain ranges. As you see here, um, there's not the way I do things, I'm not doing just throwing a mountain here and then putting another in front of it and putting another in front of it. These mountains are connected. They're all interconnected. You can follow them uh, with the line in your mind's eye. You can follow the mountain range. And that is building on the same techniques that I've been using all along, but with a few little additional things thrown in. So it's easier than it probably looks. What we're going to do is we're going to throw down, let me get a new layer here, just going to give myself a nice blank layer. Um, we're going to throw down some basic mountain forms and by doing it like that I'm implying that one's behind that one obviously. Um, if I go like that, this one looks like it's uh, further behind because it's not being occluded quite so much. And if I have another little guy here, maybe another little guy over here. Okay, so I'm drawing a mountain range. So far, not very complicated. What I want to do is actually connect these mountains up. So a real basic way to connect them is to have a ridgeline come off the back peak of the mountain and wander over towards the peak of the mountain behind it. So for instance, coming off of this peak, a nice steep line wanders on down, dips, comes back up, keeps wandering a little bit, and then ends up near that mountain peak. So what we're saying is this mountain peak comes on down, doesn't hit the ground, and meanders up and becomes this other mountain peak over here. Same thing here. Take a mountain contour line coming down. Maybe there's some little bumps in its travel. Comes along and swings up and becomes part of that mountain behind. Uh, maybe we say that this line coming down here towards this guy doesn't hit the ground, it actually comes right back up and meets the peak of that mountain there. And then finally, um, maybe we say that this contour line comes on up and meets the peak of that guy and we'll give this guy one more little contour line coming off the back that just kind of hides behind. How do we make this look nice? We switch to our eraser tool and we're going to make sure that these lines don't actually intersect each other. We're going to erase in between like this. And so we've gone from something that was just a bunch of inverted V's and now we have sort of a framework of mountains coming together as a range. We need to follow the same principles that I was following before to fill this out and make it look realistic. When we have this big switch of this contour line, we need to show the mass of the structure behind it. And we have some contour lines coming off showing the slope, the slope of the rock coming off of this contour line, maybe making it a little bit larger wherever there's a bump or a wiggle. And then these contour lines just naturally, see that? They naturally just go in and become part of the contour line, part of the contour for this next mountain here. Um, there's a little valley in between here, so we can show little lines of contour coming off like that. And then we're not going to see much on this side. Maybe 
a little bit coming down like that if we can squeeze it in. I'm working at a very uh, low res size right now. You know, these are little bitty mountains. You can do this at any size. Same principles apply each time. This contour line connecting these two mountains, it needs to have a bunch of slope coming off of it, showing where the rock is going. Shallow down here, steeper and steeper as we get near the top of the mountain. Now we have to decide, um, does this just kind of slope on down this whole area? Or is there like a trough here where we have contour coming in? These are the decisions that you make while you're mapping, while you're drawing this stuff. Whatever makes sense to your eye. And if it doesn't make sense, if you, if you draw it and it looks weird, you can just erase and try again. Give it a little bit of contour off the back here. Again, this slope coming over here. Uh, we're going to need contour coming off of that, showing the slope. Contour coming off of this, showing this slope, creating this little valley in between. Maybe we have this line going behind that line, and this little guy coming down here. Maybe we have a nice sharp slope coming like that. And so I'm making these little choices the same way I was drawing those individual mountains before, but I'm drawing it now as a complex, sort of a mountain complex, a whole range. Shallow, shallow, shallow as I'm down near the bottom, steep as I'm near the top. Get some nice big contour coming off of this guy maybe. Showing that it's a prominent area. Sometimes these contours kind of come together like that. And then we need some slope coming off of this guy. What do we have in here? Maybe this is just a big sort of bowl-shaped depression like that. And then uh, over here in the back, we need a little bit of contour coming off like that. Maybe we keep this relatively simple. And I think I have a few little spots where I need to just erase. But there we go. A bunch of little inverted Vs become a connected mountain range following the same principles that we were using just drawing individual mountains. And this process is what allows me to create this sort of look, where these mountains connect to each other, you can tell that none of them are copies. All of them are drawn individually. And I just, my eye loves looking at this sort of thing. I just uh, like the look of it. I like letting my eye wander over these mountains and just sort of feel the space that's created by this illusion of illustration. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.